Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. This is part 5 of my Marant 7 preamp build. And as you can see, we're coming along quite nicely. In the last part, we built this preamp board. Uh, we haven't tested it yet. I've done a little bit more work on the loomings. So basically, this is the output up here. This is the output of the preamp board, which goes into the delay board, and that goes back out through these RCAs here. And on the input side, this is the input just here, hiding behind this cap. Now, I've got that going through here because I haven't wired in yet the um, volume port, which will go here. So this pair of cables will loop through the volume port and then back to here, which is the output of the input selector board. But anyway, the way that this is now, it, will, it should work, except that it doesn't have a volume control. Uh, I haven't wired up the power to these boards yet. So um, first stage is to test this, um, test the re regulators, the power regulators on this preamp board, make sure that we have the power that we should have. So I've wired in the 12 volt output winding of the transformer is, is this one just down here. The high tension is not connected yet. So theoretically, when I turn this on, I should have heater volts. So, um, what I'll do is I'll just put the, put the multimeter over here. I haven't cheated and done, the, done this off camera, so we'll be doing this together. And um, just going to check what it's referenced to. Okay, so it is referenced to ground. So I'm going to want that one as ground. And V out should be this one here. Okay, let's just turn this on and see what happens. The probe slipped, but see if this is no, it's not. Not sure what the tab is, probably probably adjust. 10.8 volts DC. It's probably fair enough. So I think what I will do now is I'll whack the 12AX7s in and just make sure that their heaters all light up. Um, again, as I said, the HT is not connected yet, so all I'll have is heaters, but I think that's a good thing to check. So I'll do that next. Okay, let's see how we go. Good, the voltage is holding. Hopefully you can see, let's turn some of these lights off. Hoping you can see that these heaters are lighting up, which is kind of the general idea. So that's encouraging. One, two, three heaters. I'll just, yeah, I think you can see better now at that angle. One, two, three heaters are lighting up. So that's really, really good. The voltage was holding steady. It was not being pulled down. So that's really good as well. So now that we have verified that we have that regulated voltage, that's the voltage that I'm going to use to power the other boards. So um, I'm just going to need to strap that over to the other boards so that they have power. So I'll do that next. Okay, so we've got volts hooked up to these other boards. So when I turn it on, That's what it's supposed to do. So you probably saw, hopefully, that the LED for the delay board came on after about three seconds. And here's our input selection lights. If I turn that, I can hear the relays kicking in. So that seems to be doing the right thing. 
So everything related to the 12 volts seems to work. So what we'll do now is I'm going to pull the valves out again and hook up the HT and make sure that we have HT volts. Okay, so let's see how we go now. Now I think the regulated HT should be here. This is R3. Hopefully this is the right end, so if I turn the power on. Wow, 230 volts DC. I'm pretty happy with that. The schematic says it's supposed to be 240 volts DC. 234.5. It's pretty darn close. So I'm not unhappy about that at all. If I just turn the mains off, see how quickly this falls down. Yeah, it goes reasonably quickly, but you know, if you whack your finger on it, just after you turn it off, you'd still get a good jolt. So this is why they say be careful of these high voltage capacitors. Um, I'm, I'm on R3, but I'm reading directly across, uh, what is it, C13, 100 microfarad. It's the output capacitor for the regulator that makes this uh, HT voltage. HT stands for high tension, by the way. It's what you usually call um, the, the B plus voltage for uh, valves. They need a, a high voltage to work. So yeah, you can see that's bled off fairly quickly. So it's perfectly safe now, um, as long as I haven't got the mains lead plugged in, that is. So I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna go and make myself a cup of coffee because I just wanna have a bit of a think about whether it's now time to do the, the final smoke test on this thing. We've got our voltage rails, 12 volts and 240 volts, um, our, ancillary boards seem to be working so it's just now to see if this thing will work I think so I'll be back soon and we'll give that a go all right guys moment of truth valves are in let's turn on the mains and see what happens just gonna let it sit for a bit and see if we have any Anything erupt in flames? No, nothing is erupting in flames. I'm just going to swing you over to the scope so you can see what's on the scope. So channel two is the output. So again, I didn't cheat and do this on camera or anything. So that's two volts per division for channel two. Channel one is 0.1 of a volt. I'll just take that down a little bit more. Get channel one out of the way. Okay, so that's channel one down there. This is channel two. So it looks like it's actually amplifying, which is really encouraging. So let's just, um, fiddle with the input amplitude a little bit. That's actually the lowest amplitude that I can get out of this SIG gen. So that's good. Well, look at that. Believe it or not, I know I shouldn't sound surprised, but it actually looks like it amplifies. And just for fun, let's see what happens. We go to square wave, that looks pretty good. Sawtooth. Yeah, so that is really encouraging. Now it's only one channel obviously. So, but just before I switch over to the other channel, I'm just going to I just want to watch the um, power up condition, see what it does on power up. So let's do that now. Wait for the relay to kick in, relay kicks in. It looks like it kind of floats around 
on the startup. So I might just have to have a closer look at that. Um, I mean, the output is capacitively coupled, 2.2 microfarad capacitors in the output, so shouldn't be any DC offset. So anyway, that looks encouraging. So let me just um, quickly switch over to the other channel. Let's try the other channel. Wait for the relay to kick in again. There it goes. Look at that. So that's really, really good. So the initial test seems to suggest that this is working, so that's great. Okay guys, a couple of things. So what I was noticing is that the output was floating around um, as I changed the input level. But I think the reason for that will be precisely because it is capacitively coupled. Is this 2.2 mic cap here and this one meg resistor so uh, when you get a, a change on this with no output load so it was just hooked up to the scope then this will tend to have a bit of a DC float so I think that's what that was now you can also probably hear that there's a bit of hum so I've got it hooked up to an amplifier and some speakers and there is a fair bit of hum. Now, the thing is, is remember that I haven't got any input attenuation on this thing. So this thing um, has got really high gain without any input attenuation. So I've got to have my source levels way, way, way down to nothing. So I'm proving that it is amplifying, but I can't really do any more than that um, because I really need to have this input attenuator just you know, with, with your level, with the level so sky high. So you know, I can prove that it does amplify. So I can't do too much of that because of copyright, obviously, but also if we go to the signal generator, turn our sine wave on. So we have a signal, it's amplifying on both channels, so that's really encouraging. So I'm going to declare this initial test a success. So I need to get this input attenuator tool sorted out. Uh, then, I'll need, then I'll work out what I need to do in terms of tidying up this wiring, which is uh, maybe contributing to the hum as well. I also haven't hooked up the power LED, but apart from that, everything else is more or less done. So uh, we just need to get this knob sourced so that we can get this input attenuator installed. And so uh, I'll wrap this video up for now and um, join me on the next video. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. You can support my work on Patreon and I'm also on Instagram. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.